Hey everybody, this is Jonathan, and I'm going to go ahead and show you a few things that are going to really help out in terms of navigating through the interface in Logic Express. So to start out, I'm going to go up here in the top right corner, and you already know what a lot of these buttons do. I'm going to get to bounce here in a few minutes, but I'm going to start with these two drop downs here. These allow you to change the script for the left click and your command click. So if I go ahead and go and pull down this drop down, I can change that to Eraser Tool. So now my left click is an eraser tool. So if I wanted to, I could just erase a section of this song. I could just erase that like that. Also, if I was in automation, I could just change these automation points by clicking and holding and dragging over these points to erase it. This really helps out a bunch to just save you a bunch of time. The drop down to the right of that allows you to change the script for your command click and its default at marquee tool. So say I wanted to use a pencil tool this could also be very helpful in something like automation. So if I hold command and then I can click, then I could just draw in automation points just like this. And that will save you a lot of time compared to having to click in each individual automation point. All right, moving down here along the right side, you can see these two sliders. This one on the right allows you to change the size of the track vertically and then the one to the left of that allows you to change how zoomed in on the track it is altogether. The button to the left of that allows you to change and expand the wavelength. So when I click it, the wavelengths on each track get expanded. This can really help out so you can see the wavelength more precise and you can make more precise changes. Going down along this bar here, there are a bunch of very, very important buttons here. The one on the far right is the metronome. If I just go ahead and click it, it lights up, and that means that if I play the song, it'll just be clicking with the song in the tempo that you have set. If I go ahead and hold this down, you can see a few different options. And then if you go into metronome settings, this is where you can change the volume and the tonality of the metronome. So if you need it to be louder, you need it to be more high pitched or low pitched, that will be the place to make those changes. The button to the left of that is solo. So that has the same effect as if I was to press S on the keyboard. As you can see, I'm just pressing S on the keyboard and it is turning that on just for solo option. The button to the left of that is replace. This is used in recording. So if I have this on and I go and record, instead of just overlapping on the recording I have, it'll just create a new bar for that recording. So then I won't have a drop down of tracks to choose from. Next to that is Auto Punch, and this is really helpful if you just wanted to change a precise part in your track. If you click this, this bar comes up right here, and I can move that wherever I want. I can expand it to whatever size, and when I record, it will only record within the area of that bar. So that can help you out just to change a certain part within a song and get it to exactly how you'd like it. The button next to that is Cycle. And this has the same effect as if I was to press C on my keyboard. So this comes up here, and it's very similar to the auto punch. You can move it and move it however you want. And that just allows it so it will only play within that area. If you press J on your keyboard, it will change it to this, and that means it'll play. And then once it gets to this, it'll skip over it to the end. So that can be helpful in numerous amounts of ways. The button next to that is low latency. And this can help out if you're using plugins that have a lot of delay that are very high latency. And you can just make it so it's in low latency mode. So then if you're playing through output speakers, you don't have to worry about all that stuff getting messed up like that. So it just keeps it in low latency so it won't go uh, above a certain threshold. And if you skip over to this other side, these are all very self-explanatory, just like the record, pause, play, stop, fast forward buttons. These few here have a bunch of different things that you can use them for, but one of the main ones is Mixer. This brings up the Mixer and you can see all the different tracks that you have in your song. And this will allow you to monitor all the levels at one time and you can see all the plugins and inserts that you have along with the bus settings that you're using. And a hotkey for this is X. All right. 
So moving up along here to the side, there are a few buttons here, and inspector is just this off to the left, so if you press that, it will get rid of it. The hotkey for that is I. These are two settings, drop downs, and then the buttons next to that is auto zoom. Auto zoom allows you to have it so each track that you're clicked on will have an extra amount of zoom compared to the others, so you can see it more in depth. And then there's automation and flex, and then all these buttons within here are all customizable. So if I right click here, you can go to customize toolbar and it can bring it up and you can drag in any one of these buttons. And it's all based off of what you're needing to do and the, I guess the button and tools that you use the most often. All right, these few down here are pretty helpful and this little blue walking guy basically just means that it's following this playhead so if I go ahead and play, it's following it as it goes. If I move, that turns off, and then if I press this again, it'll just keep following. The button next to that is hide. So when I press this, this little H comes up on each track. So say I wanted to hide a track, and I wanted to hide this bass track. I'd press that, and then I can go ahead and press this, and it hides it. It's still on and it's not muted at all. It just means that it's out of your view so you don't have to worry about it for now and then you can unhide it and it's still there. And you can do that with however many tracks that you'd want. It can help you clean up the interface a bit, I guess. All right, next to these, there's a few drop downs that can be very helpful and a lot of them have settings that you can find just by right clicking a lot of these tracks and those are just ones to do a bunch of different things like select but a lot of those are just tools that you can find elsewhere and then something that they were talking about for this new version of logic is this drum replacement or doubling so if I click on that basically what it does is it'll analyze the track and then you can go ahead and put in a different sound for each drum that you're looking for so if I wanted to change the sound of the kick the snare the tom you can adjust the threshold and you can replace it with a different sound of that kind of instrument. So, as you can see, there's a bunch of different ones. It just gives you a sound to improve the sound of your drums. All right, now, moving up here to bounce. This is where you're gonna find a place to adjust and change what you're gonna be saving your track as and your entire song. and when you're doing that, before you do that, you want to make sure that you have the end of your song set to where you want it. This little box here is how you adjust that. You want to have this box right where you want the song to end because wherever you have that, the playhead will not go past and that's where the song completely ends. So when I go into bounce, you can change the type of format that you're looking for. So if I wanted to change it and put it into an MP3 format, I can do that and I can also export this and bounce it to wherever I want. So if I want to export this as My Amazing Song, I can do that and it's going to be exported as an MP3 song and it's going to end exactly where I have the playhead. So once I have that, I can just go ahead and press bounce. It's going to analyze bounce the track. It's now on my desktop right there, MP3. All right. Well, I hope that this helped you out a bunch with being able to navigate through the interface and Logic Express easier. And if you have any questions or comments about the program, I can definitely get to those in a future video. Just leave me a comment below. And as always, thanks for watching. See you soon. Bye.